What's up guys? So last week I did a video on this pistol. This is the Colt 1908 Best Pocket. And I talked about one of the weird little malfunctions it would have. Well anyways, I decided that it was time for me to do a full review on this little gun. So these little pistols were manufactured by Colt from 1908 to 1948. It was marketed as a small concealable handgun. The barrel length is two inches overall length is 4.5 it is an absolutely small handgun and it was designed by John Browning now Colt originally did not want to make this handgun but after seeing the popularity of FN's model 1906 they took heed and decided to manufacture this in 1908 it was chambered for 25 ACP designed by John Browning around 420,000 of these guns were made. So when you pick this thing up for the first time, uh, pictures don't do it justice. It's tiny. The first time you see it, it looks so much smaller in person. Uh, cameras seem to make it look bigger in my opinion. It is absolutely tiny. I mean you pull out the uh, magazine. That is the cutest little mag I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's adorable. It just, pictures don't do it justice. It shoots the 25 ACP and this round is absolutely tiny. I mean it, it really looks like you know a pill. <laughs> It's that small. So, yeah, the first time you see it, you're going to be like, whoa, that thing is absolutely adorable and tiny. And uh, <laughs> uh, I got to get off the tiny part so I can make the video. So, anyways, um, you can get about one finger on it and then the rest dangle off. If you don't do that, for me at least, this little ridge that the uh, magazine's sticking out, will hit you in the finger and it's not really comfortable. So you have to curl your fingers underneath it and you can get one good finger uh, right here on the grip. So you basically have two fingers gripping the gun while one pulls the trigger. <laughs> so you, you can shoot it like this if you wanted to. <laughs> That's one thing. So, you know, when, when you're handling a gun, you always keep your finger off the trigger. I almost feel a little nervous doing that because my finger almost extends out past the, the muzzle. Uh, it doesn't, but, um, well, actually, maybe just barely. So it feels almost, like, dangerous to me. <laughs> and you almost want to kind of hold it like this or something. But uh, it is absolutely tiny. I got I to gotta get back to reviewing it. <laughs> We all know it's tiny. So um, let's get to that malfunction I was talking about. So in my last video, what would happen is if I gripped the grip safety too hard, then pulled the trigger, we would have light primer strikes. Every time it was predictable. I actually, um, I recorded it, but it didn't turn out. But uh, I actually predicted when it would do that. I loaded up a magazine, shot two rounds, and then squeezed it really hard on the third round and click it didn't fire actually I think this bullet yeah this bullet's the one I took out because it has a very light primer strike and so and then I cleared it didn't grip it as hard and it shot fine why it's doing that I don't know um, the only thing I could think is when I am pulling the trigger um, I'm also squeezing the uh, grip safety so I pulled the trigger back and then I I pull the grip safety in while pulling the trigger. So it's almost like I'm squeezing it like like that. So I'm uh, with the grip, I'm squeezing it and pulling the trigger at the same time versus squeezing the grip safety then pulling the trigger. I don't know why that would be a problem. Uh, <laughs> I told my gunsmith about it and he said that he's heard of that happening. So it's, it's, it's a, one of the weird oddities about this handgun. Now, once I got past it, it was fairly reliable.
Now, I did shoot 200 rounds of ammunition through this American Eagle. And for over a 100-year-old gun, the seller told me it was around 1914 this was made. I haven't had a chance to uh, research that. But um, for over a 100-year-old handgun, I'm actually impressed that it did as well as it did. It had some failures to feed. It had some failures to eject. I noticed once it got dirty on the magazine, the third round would not feed. It wouldn't do anything. Actually, the slide would go over the top of it and you'd have a click and you'd look inside and there was no bullet. So for some reason, once it got dirty, this magazine would not feed the third round the first time. After you cycle it again, it would work fine. I'm not sure why it did that, but um, that was one of the things. So we had some failures to eject, some failures just all around. But it's over a hundred year old gun and honestly, if I got some new springs for it, I maybe took it to my gunsmith to uh, do an overhaul to make sure that uh, you know everything on the inside's operating properly, I bet this gun would work flawlessly. So even though it today we would consider it a novelty, it is a well-made handgun. I mean, it's really smooth. It's it's really well made. There's no slop anywhere. It's got a good trigger pull, even though I think this grip safety is a little bit heavy. I feel like I'm overcoming the grip safety more than the trigger. Um, but that does make it safer, you know. Um, you, it's so tiny, you could put it in a vest pocket. Well, that's the name. You could pretty much pocket carry this thing anywhere, and you get six rounds of 25 ACP, which back in the 20s was popular, but by today's standards, it is not a favored round. Seems to be working now. And then it works fine. The sights suck. I'm just gonna be honest with you. The sights absolutely suck with this handgun. <laughs> You can get some accuracy out of it. It's a challenge because you're, you're gripping it with two fingers and it's small and you're having to overcome that grip safety as well as pull. The trigger pull is good, but uh, you have to do all that. You have to pull the uh, trigger, pull the uh, grip safety and grip it with one finger basically <laughs> down here. It is a very easy gun to pull or to move around, but you can get some accuracy out of it. It's a challenge. All right, so this is probably about five, maybe a little under. Um, I'm not very good at judging. I just know between the, che uh, the trees is 10 yards and I'm halfway in between the trees and the target. So I'm guessing this is about five yards. And I'm gonna go for that little chart to the right. And we're doing this again. Oh. Yeah. All right. I had some flyers I'm not happy about, but there's a flyer down there too. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. I don't think this grip safety is very comfortable and the trigger pull is fantastic, but it's got a heel release, which on a small gun like this, I'm not, I'm not sure if I would want a mag release. I don't think there's enough room for one. Right here would have to be it, and I'm not sure there's enough room. Uh, the heel release makes the most sense to me, and it's not like you're going to be reloading this thing a lot. <laughs> uh, it doesn't fall, so you have to grip it like this. It's not hard, but... On a small pistol like this, the heel release makes a lot of sense to me. But it is kind of fun to shoot the 25. Never shot it before. This was the very first time I shot a 25. It's kind of fun. It's a poof. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.
You can hold open the slide, but the magazine doesn't do it. If you pull it back, you can use this end of the safety to engage into that little notch in the slide and it can hold it back. So the finish of this gun is not great. I got it for a really good price. I'm pretty happy about what I got it for. The grip on this side has a little crack in it, but honestly, the, I kind of like it looking worn like this. It looks like a gun that was carried a long time. So you have to pull the slide back and then turn, you have to find where it is, but there's a spot when you, there it goes. So right here, I can turn the barrel like that. And then with it turned like that, the whole slide comes off the gun. And a lot of springs you have to watch out for. So right here is your striker and spring and then if you want to get the barrel out you have to turn it like this because there's some grooves on the inside of the slide you have to turn it so that the the uh, barrel moves with it moving you can push it from the back like this and of course this is going to be very tricky to do on camera and then you can pull the barrel out the back like this and then the recoil spring comes out of the frame like that I really did like the small looks of it I just think it looks cool and oh I can't wait to shoot this thing again because I know once I show it to a couple of my buddies they're gonna want to shoot it so anyways maybe I'll replace this the springs if you guys would like to see a video on that let me know and I can uh, make a full video on how the performance is with uh, brand new springs in it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. I got a lot of cool stuff coming up. I'm working with Sheen Prasky or Sean, sorry, Sean Prasky from Prasky Gunworks and he's got some really cool guns that are going to be coming to the channel really soon. So uh, hopefully that comes up. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming up.